Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well in these unprecedented times. It's really important to us that you're doing okay, so if you're unsure of anything or you need to speak to someone, please reach out. We are here to help. Okay, so this video is going to be about latitude and altitude and how they affect the distribution of ice on the Earth. So latitude is the measurement of the distance of a location on the Earth from the equator. So the equator is this dotted line right here, and that starts at zero degrees. So if we're looking at the North Pole, we'd go from zero, and it goes up, and we can see that it's 90 degrees north. So it's 90 degrees north from the equator at zero. And the same goes for the South Pole. The only difference is that it is in negative numbers. So the South Pole is minus 90 degrees south from the equator at zero degrees. So the further away from the equator that a location is, such as the North Pole and the South Pole, the location will get less sunlight and heat. And this is because the sun's rays are weaker further away from the equator. That's because they have a bigger distance to go and they cover, they're dispersed over a larger distance in comparison to the equator. So at the equator, the sun's rays are very concentrated. So that means close together. And so there is more intense heat. So these yellow blocks are the sun's rays. And we can see here, these rays here travel a short distance. So this is going to be equator. And they go to one particular spot right here. So that means they're close together. And that means there's more intense heat for this section of the, for the section of the globe. And this differs from those in high latitudes because the rays take longer to get to the globe, to get to the Earth, and they're dispersed over a larger distance. So they have to go over this entire part of the globe. And so there's not as so much heat going to these areas because they're over a larger distance and they have to go to more places on the Earth than those going to the equator. So at the equator, the sun's rays travel a short distance through the atmosphere. So this is the atmosphere. So going from the sun to the earth, they don't travel very far. And this is, means that less heat is lost along the way. And therefore, more of the sun's rays reach the earth's surface. So on the other hand, looking at the high latitudes, such as the north and the south pole, the sun's rays also have to pass through a longer distance in the atmosphere before reaching the earth's surface. So they take longer to get from the sun to get to the earth itself. And because of this, more heat is lost to the atmosphere. So more heat goes up in the atmosphere. So even though the rays which strike the polar region, so the North and South Pole, the Arctic and Antarctic, Antarctic Circle, carry the same amount of heat as those rays that hit the equator and the tropical regions, this heat is diffused and dispersed over a larger area. So looking at the equator and the tropical re regions, this is kind of how the rays are dispersed. They're dispersed in shorter areas. It doesn't have to go as far and they don't have to be diffused over larger areas in comparison to the North and South Pole, in which the rays have to go along the curvature of the Earth. So that means they're diffused and dispersed over a larger area, which means that those areas don't get some intensity of heat in one specific area. It's spread. And so therefore it's colder in these north and south areas in comparison to those at the equator. So on the slide in front of us, we have a map which shows the tundra ecosystem. So those are those in blue. So these blue sections are where the tundra is. And the tundra is a landscape that has no trees. It's a treeless landscape. And that is because it is too cold for trees to grow. So all of these blue bits, is where we have ice and snow and no trees. And we can see from this map that these blue areas, so these tundra areas, are found at high latitudes. So we've got north and south of the equator. So here's a really poorly drawn line of the equator. Here is the equator. And we can sit there quite far north and quite far south of the equator itself. So they're at high latitudes. And from our knowledge now, we know that at high latitudes, the sun's rays, although they carry the same intense amount of heat, they're dispersed over larger areas, so therefore those areas are colder. And this can be seen 
from there being the tundra landscape at the north and south close to the poles. However, before we go on to the altitude, we can see that there are some sections, some areas on this map that are blue that aren't super duper close to the poles. So we've got this area here and this here. And I'm going to discuss why these are blue in a moment. So altitude is the height above sea level. And so it gets colder at high altitudes. An example of a high altitude would be a mountain top. OK, so thinking about it being colder, the higher above sea level it goes. We can look back at this map and we know that these areas might very well be mountains. So the further above sea level these mountains go, the colder it will be. And so there will be ice and snow found at these areas. Although it's not on this map, we will also find ice and snow around the Himalayas, as well as other mountainous regions. OK, so sea level is the is measured from where the sea meets the, the, the land. So that would be zero. And any land that goes higher above that goes up in meters. So we can see that. At zero degrees sea level, we've got quite a warm temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. However, further above sea level you go, so for example, up to 3,000 meters, it becomes a lot colder and it gets down to 10.5 degrees Celsius. So from this, we can gauge that the higher above sea level it goes, the colder the temperature will be. And the reason for it being colder the higher the altitude is because the air is much thinner under less pressure. So from this image here, we can see that this would be about zero degrees sea level. And we can see that these particles, so let's imagine they're water particles, are really close together. And that is because they're under a lot of pressure and the air is thicker. So they're closer to get them all compacted. If you think back to science and particles and knowing that gases are spread out a lot more. So you can tell that from this image that the higher the altitude becomes, so the further above sea level it goes, we can see that these particles have a lot more space between them. And that is because the air is much thinner and under less pressure. And because of this, the air is expanded, which means it is more difficult for it to keep the heat. So down here, close to sea level, you can see that all of these particles are close together. And because they're close together, it's easier for them to keep heat because they're compacted. However, the further above sea level they go, the more dispersed they are, which means they're not as close together. And so it's difficult for them to keep the heat. So from this, we know that the higher the altitude, the colder it is. So an example of the differences in altitude here, we have the Mount Everest base camp. So that's this bit right here. OK. And from this, we can see there's little to no ice on the ground at all. And this is because it's only 5,600 metres above sea level. So although it is still pretty cold the further up you go, it's not necessarily cold enough to maintain ice and snow cover all year round. However, on this picture as well, you can see that the higher above sea level it goes from there. So you can look at Mount Everest Peak and all that. So, for example, here we can see snow and ice cover on the mountains, and this is because it's at a higher altitude. And like we discussed earlier, the higher the altitude, it's colder, and that's because the air is much thinner and under less pressure. And because of this, the air is expanded, which means it's difficult for it to keep the heat. So the particles, the air particles, aren't as close together. So the heat is diffused and dispersed into the air. So it is a lot colder at higher altitudes of those further above sea level. So here we have a picture of Mount Everest's peak, and that is 8,849 meters above sea level. And here we can see lots of snow and ice. And this is because of having a high altitude. So again, high altitude means air is thinner, it's under less pressure, and so it's colder. And because it's colder, we find lots of snow and ice. Thank you very much for listening today. I hope this has helped.